Hi guys, it's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. Today's video, oh my goodness, I am in love with stamping and those crackery stamps and I had ordered some IOD animal stamps. So, and I have, this is a lot of, I have a lot going on in some labeling of some jars and some canisters. So I hope this is up your alley and you're ready to sit back and enjoy and hopefully get inspired or share some of your thoughts in down in my comments but I am super excited about this video. I had a lot of fun making it. I needed to stop at some point because I just kept wanting to share so much with you. I was having so much fun labeling stuff. I it's just not your everyday labeler anymore. So if you're new to our channel, I do thrift flips. I take thrifted find items along with my husband, Chris, and we share our vision for these items and we resell here locally in an antique mall. So this is definitely a kind of a hodgepodge type of group of items that I am going to be transforming into farmhouse decor for resale. I know this glassware is kind of a little bit on the boring side. So in this video, we're going to be spicing it up and giving it that awe factor, something to attract it. I absolutely love these types of jars. I love that they had that nice tight seal. I and it just you can use them as storage or just some nice decor pieces, especially this large glass jar that probably was a pickle jar. But wow, I can't wait to transform it. And then this little jar, though, it's not a jar with a lid. It has this detailing of this jute rope. I'm not a big fan of the thicker jute rope. I kind of think it looks more nautical-y. And these galvanized tins have been in my hoard for a while. Sometimes you just have to get inspiration of what to do with them. So there's a reason that they're tucked back waiting to be done. But I do finally have an idea for these. And then I have these Crocs, though the creamish ones, I definitely know what I'm doing too. And the black ones, I have a te new technique that I'm trying out for the first time. Yes, we too as YouTubers also get inspired by other YouTubers and other Pinterest pa pages. We're just always looking for ideas. And this one, when I thrifted it, I didn't realize it had some weird texture sticky stuff that just would not come off. These are the type of items that I normally just pass up in this thrift store because I don't usually paint items like this, though I have seen a lot of people on YouTube and Pinterest and Instagram doing it. I thought, why not give it a try? My fear is that it doesn't stay on, and that's always been my fear that when I go to resell item, I want it to have longevity. I don't want it to get all damaged up. So we will see how I can flip these. And then of course, prepping these items, getting them nice and clean is my first priority, getting any of the tags off. And you know, most of these were kitchen items. So the chances of them having some kind of a residue left behind is, yeah, 100%, I'm sure there is. So the first thing I'm going to do, I love these little tops. These are the ones to the three set, and they actually are little porcelain knobs, so I'm able to remove them because as you see, they have a lot of wear on this wooden top. After getting that knob removed, I need to move this rubber seal. When I am checking out canisters like this, I'm making sure that those rubber seals are not brittle and dry. And these are nice and firm and have a little bit more life left in them. I don't want a, I like my jars, if they're going to have items like this, that those seals are nice and tight. Then now I can go back through it and get any of these price tags off, any store tags, and get these wiped clean. As I was cleaning the pickle jar lid, I could feel that bumpiness of the rust. So I went over, grabbed some 220 sandpaper, and I'm going to sand as much as I can, sand that rust nice and smooth before painting it. And as you see on these canister lids, they have that manufactured top coat, and especially for the one that was just, it was okay, but I need to get that manufacturer's top coat off so when I go to do my type of finish, that it stays on there. You don't really want to spray over a top coat, especially as a kitchen item. It just won't ad adhere as much as you need it to. And then of course these canisters, I could not remove that screw, that screw was in there, but I can sand around that and they have a lot of wear, that a lot of that top coat is coming right off. So I need to make sure I get as most of I can 
most of this off that I can, especially even on the sides. And yep, if it didn't have it for, well, I don't even know if I could use an orbital sander. It's just not big enough to, it's just one of those hand sanding type of jobs. So like I said, this is, I am new to doing any type of canisters, so I'm sharing you my newbie process. And I can't imagine spraying the inside of canister, especially since you're using it. So I definitely, when I was looking for canisters, I wanted it to be that cream, that black, that white, that goes with my black and white theme that I always paint. So what I'm doing here is I just have some Dollar Tree, the big, or actually Dollar General, big thick masking tape and I'm just trying to make a circle a line so that I have a line of that I'm stopping where I'm painting so this is I don't know maybe you guys have a little bit more tech better technique I actually tried to put the contact paper on there and see if that would work but it just it wouldn't adhere to this type of material so masking tape it is I'm sure that you could use painters tape too but cost efficient I always have this masking tape on hand and I love this little farm fresh cow, so I'm going to be taping over him also and cutting around that tape. I like taking those rubber seals off so that I didn't spray those. These have a permanent in there. I can't, it's, it's on there. So I'm just going to be taping the bottom of these lids so that I, when I'm spraying them, I'm not getting paint all over that. Just... This is my preferred method. I just kind of like painting the backs and make them look pretty. I want the underneath of these lids just to be as pretty as the tops. So for these wooden lids, as you could tell, the manufacturer poly acrylic polyurethane, whatever the top coat was that they put on these, did not adhere and did not stay for longevity. So what I'm doing here, I have got these all sanded and I'm going to spray them with a couple coats of shellac. So what that's going to do is even out the porosity of this wood. So if, in case I left any of that manufacturer's top coat on there, I'm just evening out everything. And this is hopefully going to help it so when people go to use these in their kitchen that or wash them, a quick wash underneath the sink, that it doesn't come off like it did with the manufacturer's one. So my first step is getting something to adhere to this type of material. I watched a lot of YouTubers and I followed a lot of pages on Pinterest to see what everybody used. So I am just got a can of white linen chalk paint from Walmart and that is what I'm using. This is like the undercoat, the base layer. I want to make sure, yep, I know my OCD wants this to stay on and stay on for a long time. Even if somebody does run this underwater, I get a little bit nervous. I, When I flip an item and I put a, my, our name on something, I want it to be, I want it to be a permanent and a nice item. So this is like I said, this is the undercoat of what I'm doing. That way I know this is supposed to stick to this type of material. So for this little canister, just the way that the tape was, it was kind of going up. So I did end up taping the tape down to the board before spraying it. And this is where that turntable in a spray room in the middle of a Michigan winter comes in so handy because I can do these types of projects and not wait for summer. So now I'm on to my Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer in One, and yes, if you use this, you know, especially with that pickle lid, that it is good on rust, rusty items, but I got a lot of that off of that pickle jar lid, so now I'm doing the underneath of these lids first. Of course, I'm not spraying the underneath of these lids, I'm just getting the top, and yep, I cannot, if you are a flipper like I am, or you just like to dabble this with this yourself and sell in Marketplace, Yes, this turntable, it's a TV turntable. I know I probably say this in all my videos, but look how it just makes it so easy to do this. So as careful as I was to prep these items, to spray these items, to watch when I was spraying that there wasn't any drips, I did give them two coats of this chalk paint. Look at that crack. In my first thought of these items, I was just going to leave them the white, but then after seeing that crack, I was not happy at all, but it does happen as us DIYers. So I thought, yep, I'm going to give that texture paint a try where they do the texture paint and make it look like cement. So I've got the jars baking soda. I've got my Waverly chalk paint in white, my Waverly chalk paint in ink, and my antiquing wax, and I'm just mixing it. Those 
the Waverly's all up until I get the gray that I'm looking for. And then it's equal parts. It's equal parts, whatever your paint is, to your equal parts of baking soda. And you just mix it up and then you apply it on. I'm using this chalk brush. I got it at Walmart. I like to buy things local. That way I can just run and get stuff when I need it. So that's this is the brush that I'm using to apply it. It's a thicker paint, of course, because it's a textured paint. And so I'm going in with my lettering, that kitchen lettering first. And I don't know, do I go up and down? Do I go side to side? I guess you just do whatever works for you until I get the item covered. And yes, I do have it on a board and I do have it on a Lazy Susan. So yep, there again, I can turn it around without touching the item. This item was actually given to me by a friend. I think it held a citronella candle in it, so I was kind of unsure what to do with it. But man, that mixture made up a lot of this paint. And I thought, well, why not? It's got that, it is an aged galvanized. I do like that. But I kind of thought, ah, uh, yep, yeah, why not? I've got a lot of this. That went a long way. I think that the baking soda kind of puffs it up and acts as an accelerator when you mixed it with the chalk paint. So now I got a lot of this paint. And I'm, as I'm assess assessing the other two cracks that I thought, yeah, I was gonna leave those white. I'm like, nope, I am liking how that kitchen one turned out. I'm just going to do, Yep, I'm going to keep on using this cement mixture. I absolutely love the color. And we all know sometimes white items um, in kitchens get very dirty with our baking hands or our cooking hands. So why not? I'm just moving on and doing a little bit more of the cement look. And then I'm going in with a smaller brush. This crock actually had a little bit of a lip, so I have a great stopping point of where I can put the paint going around the top and into that inner lip there. So I thought, well, I, so far I'm liking that gray cement look. So I'm going to mix up some of this mineral paint with some of that baking soda and do this large black container as well and give it more of that crocky color. <laughs> Is that a word? Crocky? Sure. So this has a nice stopping point at the bottom. So I'm going to leave that bottom black. And then the same thing with the side. It has a good stopping point. I'm not spraying this. So we are going to try to see how this paint adheres. I know because I don't have a base color and that this is black that I'm going to have to give it two coats. And for this one, I'm going to do the side to side. On the other ones, I did up and down. Like I said, this, I'm a newbie at this too, but I'm sharing how this is all going, going. So this is just what I'm doing. I'm just curious how well this paint will stick without a base coat of the chalk paint. Why not? Why not give it a try if this, and then see how they sell. So now I'm moving on to a coat number two. I actually let it dry for quite a few hours and I do think that it's definitely covering up with that second coat. So these are the steps that I could not find. Other than using a white wax and stamping them, I didn't really see how to finish them off. And my OCD wants me to do something, something to these. Now they're a little bit on the rough textured side. 
that is a little bit of I have a texture thing. So I am just taking a 300 grit sandpaper and lightly going over it until it feels smooth to me. I'm going to be doing that to all of the pieces that I've done the textured paint on. I know that you want that texture, but I don't like that rough roughness especially along the bottom part and that top part where the chunkiness kind of stayed and it was really rough. I definitely don't want it marring up anybody's countertop or anybody's pieces of furniture. So yes, that 300 is working just fine. So can I tell you how excited I am to get to use some more of these IOD stamps? Yep, I ordered the animals. I am so excited. And I absolutely love the Marbleade stamps, the crackery stamps that I had previously gotten. So these are projects that I'm going to be using some of these stamps on. I just love the look of these animals. So I used to do stamping up for years, not that I sold it, but that I went to parties and made cards. And so I'm sharing with you how to prep the new stamps that you get because you know they're manufactured pieces. So I am just taking a piece of overly used sandpaper, a 220 piece, and I'm just running it across the whole stamp. So what that's gonna do is it's going to be able to help this little stamp accept the ink, the paint, whatever it is that you're using on it to give a more in-depth color if you don't do this you'll still get it it'll just won't be as deep of color as you think that you're looking for it only takes a few minutes to do the this uh, well on these animals it took a few a little bit more than a few minutes only because they are big stamps so i did go ahead and purchase the stay on ink pan though the only one i could find at home depot is this the only size they come in because it is small so i picked up this brayer that they had on clearance at hobby lobby and i'll see how it is using this to rub it on the stamp to get it inked so what i'm doing here is i want to practice seeing what this this little rabbit can do i'm so i'm going to get him all inked up and then put it on this piece of paper i highly suggest that seeing what your stamp does on a side piece of paper before putting it on the object that you want it to be and with these being such a big stamp you definitely want to try to go over all the pieces and parts when you're pressing it down so I have this set of canisters and I want to put some of the marmalade stamps on it though that is a wavy material so I know that I'm not going to be able to get a clean stamp on them that I'm going to be doing stamping them on paper and then mod podging them onto these canisters so I'm assessing which ones fit on the canisters. The pad of paper I'm using is a cardstock it's just white plain cardstock I think I picked it up at um, Walmart nothing fancy it comes in a little package like this it's all kind of together so i'm just trying out this sprayer to see about getting all this covered not really i mean I, sometimes i'm sharing what i'm doing new right with you all so trying to make sure that i have that whole surface area of this stamp covered the nice thing about doing it on paper first is you just keep getting to do the image until you like how it turned out then I'll proceed on doing the same thing, inking up these little stamps and putting them on the paper until I like the image that comes out. And then now I'll go in and I will cut as close as I can to the image. Now, even though I have washed these canisters up, I still like to take a little bit of a cotton ball and some rubbing alcohol and make sure that I've got that surface area nice and prepped so there's no reason that it won't adhere to the front of this. So I like to use the Maj Podge in the mat. I don't want it to be shiny. So that's all I'm doing, Maj Podge in a little bowl, a little sponge applicator, generously put it on the back of the piece of paper. Yep, your hands are gonna get in there if you feel like you need to wear gloves. I'm just used to wearing stuff on my fingers. I really get into my projects. Do you all do that too? So, yep, just a generous amount on the back of the piece of paper first. Here's that TikTok hack of using two lint rollers beside your round object so it doesn't roll around on you. 
And for filming, this is the way I'm putting it on so you all can kind of see it. I have to say it's a little bit more difficult to film and show you guys what I am doing. So the nice thing about Maj Paging it is I have a few minutes to play with it. I can make sure that it's even and centered. And then now I'm just gently tapping it. Remember that, that this little canister is wavy. So I want to just make sure that at first that it is on. And then I can go back in with some more Maj Podge. And now I can run it over the top. I kind of like to, um, for especially for this canister, I want to make sure that the any kind of little holes or grooves on the side of that piece of paper are nice and filled in with this Maj Podge. And I just have a little wet rag here that I'm just making sure that I don't have excess over on the canister itself. But not taking it off for her, I wanted it underneath to make a seal underneath that piece of paper. And I'm going to be doing the exact same thing with the other two canisters. Gently, you know, applying a fair amount on the back of the piece of paper first and then playing with it on the front of the canister and then putting more on top and making sure that since this has those grooves in it that it is sealed. And then I want to take away that stark white of that paper and as you see the grooves kind of have a little bit of a aged look to them so I'm just why the Maj Paj is still on a little bit of the wet side. I'm taking a little bit of antiquing wax and that rag that I was using and putting some antiquing wax just to take that sharp edge make it look like it was blended. I know it's a label it's just that's what it is it's a decorative piece and now I'm just antiquing a little bit letting some of that Maj Paj some of the Maj Paj has already dried so it'll kind of give that really that nice antiquing look because it won't be a smooth that's why I kind of let it sit off to the side and dry a little bit first before applying the antiquing wax if you did this as soon as you put the label on then it would be a little bit it would grab differently these are the three lids that went to that canister set and I had already sprayed them. We did that earlier in the video and now I'm going back in distress and I taking some 220 sandpaper, hit that sharp edge so some of that natural wood shows through on the top and that bottom little lip of the lid and now I'm just taking some steel wool and taking off that shininess that the polycrylic leaves behind. And yep, you guessed it, if you're one of my regular viewers, yep, I'm putting some antiquing wax over this brown. I want to not have that problem with these lids that how I thrifted them where all that top coat was coming off. I know they're a kitchen item. I know it's a decorative item, but the chances that they might get wet, maybe. Um, so it's already sealed in with the polycrylic. It's got the antiquing wax. I sell my items as decorative pieces only. So, I mean, common sense, just dry dust, wet, lightly dust something off. I share that in my booth if you're all wondering. This is that Farm Fresh canister. I had chalk painted it just in that white linen. And now I want to age, give a little bit of wax seal to this. It's a little bit starky white. It's got those weird little marks where the manufacturer had tried to make it look distressed. So I'm just taking some of the antiquing wax and then I'm going to be wiping most of all. I just want it to age it just a little bit. That label underneath that masking tape has that little bit of aged tannish brown to it. I just want this all to blend together. So now I'm onto those pieces that I cement painted with the baking soda and chalk paint mixture and I'm going back in and white wax and I'm using the Waverly white wax that I get at, I got at Walmart. I've had this even before I did the project <laughs> and you know sometimes as a crafter you just pick up things going hmm maybe I might use this so that's why I have it and so yep I just have a piece of drop cloth. I've sanded this so it's a little bit on the more smoother side. I just uh, just a preference that I like maybe it was the way I put it on doesn't really matter it was my first time trying it and so I'm just white wiping it on and then I'll go back in and wipe the excess off just to give it that little bit more of a cement look I'm gonna be doing it to all the other ones that I had done that mixture on so I won't I know this video is gonna end up being log so how much can you watch watch me wax on and wipe wax off but yep I did it to all the other ones that I had done the chalk paint baking soda mixture 
I need to set those off to the side and let them cure, make sure that wax is dry before putting any kind of stamp on them. So now I'm moving to these three. Now these are nothing, they are just newer pieces of crockery. I'm going to prep them the same way. I've already cleaned them with Dawn dish soap, then the sink, hot water, let them dry. But I still like to make sure that everything is nice and clean. So I'm just taking a cotton ball with that alcohol, making sure that my surface is nice and prepped. Like I said, these were just cracks that I picked up. They're nothing special. So let's make them special. I'm just going to the stamps. I'm assessing which ones will fit in the space provided that, you know, I'm not going over on that lip. I'm not running to the bottom. And I'm so excited that I get to use the pig and the sheep on these. So I know, I know my OCD always gets the best of me. So I'm centering it, making sure where that stamp is going to go. Nice thing is that there's a round object that I don't have a center point that I have to match up, but I do want it to stay level. So that's what I'm using the masking tape for. I'm just eyeballing it. Is that perfectly imperfect of a stamping and crockery? And I wasn't really sure the previous ink that I used, I was able to wipe off and I don't know about the stays on. So we will find out. So I'm trying the brayer again on this great huge sheep, trying to get all those pieces and parts of this stamp to make sure that they're inked. I'll say it again, it is a little bit challenging to do this while trying to film so you guys can see what I'm doing too. So I'm eyeballing that and just freehanding it because I think that's the easiest with these great huge stamps. And then trying to keep it so it's not sliding on this very shiny crock. And then trying to remember to press all the pieces and parts of this giant stamp, making sure that I'm leaving the ink print behind. Now that we're on to that little piggy, oh my gosh, she's so super cute. <laughs> I, I, the only sad thing about these stamps is the size of them. Um, I, I did see ones on Amazon that are a little bit smaller, don't quite have just as much of a detail. So you see, I'm switching over to doing this with that ink pad. I thought, oh my gosh, that's taking forever to use that brayer to get that ink onto the stamp. So I'm just putting it on my hand and using that ink pad this way. You just figure out what works best for you. I'm like, that's taking way too much time. So, yep, this is what I'm doing. Yep, my hands will probably be covered, but my hands are washable. So now for this little crockery one that has the lid. Yeah, I got to center this one. This is just not round. So I'm taping, making sure that I can stay above, you know, in the center of the two pieces of tape. And then same thing, I'm just going to apply that with the right on to my hand it's just the easier way good thing i bought that brayer on clearance for a couple bucks <laughs> so yep it, the same process all over again then i will tell you that the first one was not centered with the lid so i had to re wash it off with rubbing alcohol in that cotton ball luckily it came off i put it on the block because i do find that i can roll the block on with even pressure and still get it this little stamp on and I will say three times was a charm on this stamp. I'm on to doing the Crocs that I had a chalk paint and white waxed. They are now cured and set up. And now I'm centering, I taped off, and now I'm saying a little prayer as I add that stamp on that I'm evenly putting pressure to get all that imprint onto this Croc. For this Croc that is smaller, I put it back on that block. And that way I can roll the crock into the stamp, applying pressure evenly. This is just works for me. You all do what works for you. So then I'm now on this little one, I have a smaller, I'm going below the squiggly lines of that can and doing that same. I like the way on these smaller pieces with that block to be able to roll the two pieces in together, applying pressure evenly. And remember, it's the perfectly imperfect of crockery stamps. Don't stress yourself out. Oh, I know. There's so much I am packing into this video. Now I'm on to these two galvanized buckets that I've had for quite a while. I'm so excited to get to use these animal stamps. And the only thing that I can see about these animal stamps is you need a large item to be able to do them on. So I'm doing that same thing where I stamped them on some cardstock and I'm going to homage podge them on. And like I said, these stamps are big, but man, they are beautiful. 
So for me, I still want to use that antiquing wax over the top of this white. I just love that aged look that it gives. I went around and got all the extra Maj Paj off that was on the tin, and now I'm just kind of gingerly going in, eyeballing where I want the antiquing wax to be. Of course, I want it to be a little bit heavier on the edges. And I knew I wanted to wrap a little something something around the top of these little galvanized tins on the bucket and I just ended up going with the Dollar Tree <laughs> jute. I had a couple different products that I was using and I just didn't like the thickness. I just wanted that subtlety. And then I sealed everything in, anything that I maj podged, anything that I stamped with that acrylic spray. I, of course, it's smelly, so you need to do it outside. And I always like to glue my jute down. I want to make sure that it's not going to move. I just do a little dab here and there, especially where the knot is. So now I'm on to these two bottles. Like This one is a purchased vase. And this one is a wine bottle. And yes, they're both thrifted items. So I have these IOD transfers. Remember, I thought that I ordered them and I thought they were stamps, but they're not. They are transfers. So I'm just deciding what kind of goes on these bottoms the bottles. These are just kind of a simple, other than making sure that I'm lined up and the curve of the, the base and the bottle are a little bit tricky. But other than that, it's a pretty straightforward, get it centered. There are seams on these two bottles, so I am centering it and then using masking tape to hold that hard plastic that it comes on in place. And I'm checking my measurements because there are those seams just to make sure that I have this evenly centered. Now that I have it all centered, I can make sure that I am taped in place. I don't want it to be shifting at all. And so now the rubbing begins. They give you this little tool to rub and you can kind of tell when it is adhered to the glass, it kind of gets that cloudy clear look to it. it. And if not, it's still that dark black color. So just a lot of rubbing going on here until it's all adhered. Wanna make sure that you have all the pieces and parts adhered down. So go really gingerly when you're lifting off that top piece. So for bottle number two, whew, that I had to use a lot of masking tape to get this to go with the curve of this little bottle, but it was fine. I could rub just as well over the masking tape. I have to say I've never really used a lot of transfers, but it isn't too bad. My OCD probably gets the best of me on this project, but I just want to make sure that it's adhered, that I'm not ripping that transfer while I'm lifting it up. So now I'm on to the storage jar. So I'm measuring for center, seeing what size I need to cut out. I'm going to be using my Cameo Silhouette on these to cut out some vinyl, so farmhouse decor storage labels. And of course, I've already cleaned these, but I still want to use a little bit of cotton ball with some rubbing alcohol to make sure that everything is going to be good and adhered. So for these, I am creating my own labels. There is this little design that I got off of the design store. I only want one of these images, so I have to go in and delete the ones that I do not want. And then now for the moment, I'm just going to size it the same size as my mat because I'm going to be sticking some lettering inside of it. And I'm just going for a basic font. I just need to switch over to just typing out farmhouse and then going down and typing out storage. And then that's why I made that outer line um, that size so I could then stretch this out and make sure that it was even and level and appropriate to what the inside of this little box label is. Now for that pickle jar, I just randomly searched trying to figure out what I wanted I kind of like the three animal stack because that pickle jar is tall and so now I'm trying to remember I know that I have a farmhouse kitchen somewhere in here that I'll need to take apart and just use that lettering on it I know it's got a chicken I know it's in here somewhere okay there it is <laughs> 
So that's the only, I probably should take time to organize that, but that's not something I want to organize <laughs> is my designs. So yep, I'm just taking this apart, removing that chicken, removing the wording at the bottom, and just keeping that farmhouse in the kitchen. And then I'm going to be putting the farmhouse on the top of the chicken and the kitchen below the cow. Then I'll need to regroup this all together. Now I have one more container to pick out a design for and this is something I just found on the design store and so let's check it out. It's supposed to have a whole bunch of little farmhouse decor in it and it actually is unfortunately it's on the business edition side where you get those glyphs. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I do know that that is part of the business edition um, that I pay the monthly subscription for. But like I said, I make a lot of signs and do a lot of stenciling, so it's worth the money to me. But that's what I am using if you're not familiar with that. Just wanted to explain to you that just in case you were looking at that font. And so I picked out this farmer's market open daily and then I didn't want the open day, I just want the farmer's market. So I ungrouped it, deleted what I didn't want, and then grouped it back together. So then even though I designed these on individual mats, what I go in and do after I've got them sized, I group them all together on a largest mat so I can cut them all out at once. So you just copy and paste onto a larger mat. So unlike when I'm making a stencil to use paint on, I have to do this reverse now. I don't pull out my letters. I need to make sure my letters stay down because that is what is going to be going on these storage jars. So I like to cut it off in sections and do it a little by little since I have done three designs on one mat. Now I'm just using my well-loved contact paper. I like that Duck Brand contact paper for my transfer tape. And of course my OCD here, yet again, I like to make sure that everything's measured out. So I've measured, I know that my tape is all level from the lid. You kind of just have to have a guessing point. That way I know that I'm going to stay level and that I'm centered up. These jars too have those side seams. So I always have to laugh because I just think, oh my gosh, I try so hard to show you guys this all straight on. But when you're trying to get something leveled and with sticky vinyl, it's really kind of hard. So I'm trying to show you the best as I can of how I adhere this on and measure in that whole whatnot. But I hope you all can see. So it's the same concept for the third jar. I thought you don't want to watch me do one more vinyl on another jar. So here we are. We have this. This is the last, last project. So here it is. You can't see that stencil clear and white. So I all I'm going to do is color the inside of this jar. I'm going to need a little bit of paint. I'm going to need some wax paper and I'm going to need some patience. <laughs> so I'm just taking a little bit of a Dixie cup and dipping it and then pouring. It, it, it doesn't take too much, but I just want to get enough in there to cover. And then I just kind of have to keep rolling it around until it works its way down. Then now I just need to turn it upside down on that paper plate and that wax paper and say goodbye to it for the night. Okay, okay, just one more quick project. I had thrifted these three bamboo boards, cutting boards. They were brand new in packaging and when I, they were 309 and when I took the packaging off, oh my gosh, they were 
just terribly made. Some of it was splitting. It was hard on the sides. It was unfinished and needed sanded. I rounded off the edges. I glued with the CA glue pieces and parts back together. Oh, they were so disappointing. And so here they have sat. I'm not really sure what, I don't think they have that awe factor. So I remembered watching some TikTokers doing some wood burning with using a pen that they had purchased off of Amazon. So to my silhouette, I went looking for some designs to try it out. I had ordered the pens off of Amazon for $14, and so I just needed to go pick out a couple designs to put on each one of these cutting boards. Something just simple, not a lot of detailing, I thought, <laughs> but I thought it would be a lot of fun. So these are just three designs that I picked right off my design studio, cut them out in vinyl, just like I'm doing a regular stencil because I did go to YouTube and Pinterest and watch some other people doing it. So these are the three designs that I picked out. So I have to say that the instructions that I could find on other YouTubers and on Pinterest were minimal. It was basically put your stencil on, put the ink or the product from these pens on, and take a heat gun. So there I go. So I primed the pen, and I noticed that it, when I first primed that pen, it was one of those where you have to pump it to get it to come out. It was really coming out a lot. So I tried to very lightly try to smooth it around, especially on this fern. But like I said, the directions to this were minimal. I was kind of surprised. It didn't even come with any directions. So we'll we'll see how this, I'm sharing this with you all. This is the first time attempting it. And maybe you all have tried this too. So then I got that all on the fern. But like I said, I, how much was I supposed to put on? Was I supposed to put on a little? Was I supposed to put on a lot? I didn't know. <laughs> For us OCD people, it's a little bit maddening. So then now I couldn't really, some people burned it with a stencil on, some people took the stencil off. Okay, 50-50 here. So I'm going to attempt to take the stencil off. And a little bit I can tell that a little bit had bleed, bled into the wood. I didn't really, what do you do? So I did take a Q-tip on the one little corner to clean it up, but I probably should have just left it alone. But you'll see here in a minute. The longer you do it, the darker that it becomes. So I just kept going over it until I felt like it was as dark as it was going to get. So then I proceeded to remove the vinyl off the blast. It, that was the last one that I had done, so it didn't seem to bleed as much. Like I said, it was just really coming off that tip. I, I didn't know what to do. I, so it probably went underneath the vinyl on the on that piece a little bit. They, Like I said, they were really dry anyway that I had to pre-sand them. So they were pretty smooth. And everybody that I found doing them on the internet kept doing them on like, like the balsam wood from the Dollar Tree or like, um, yeah, like little wood ornaments that you could get off Amazon. For the fern, I knew that it had probably too much product on it, so I'd already dabbed it off with a napkin, so I thought, okay, you know, if it's going to be ruined, it's going to be ruined. I'm leaving the vinyl on, hoping that it will make those crisp little jackets of this fern, and the worst it could do is melt the vinyl onto <laughs> to the wood, so why not give it a try?
Okay, let's see if I can take this vinyl off or did it melt? Nope, it's doing just fine. Probably kind of like the heat of my blow dryer. It warmed up and released that sticky on it so it did not stay. But you can see that top piece. I'm already disappointed as I'm taking this off knowing that that was just way too much product on that top that it ran underneath the stencil and soaked into the wood. I can say that I'm definitely happy with how the bless turned out and how the tile turned out. I think that the fern is going to be an epic fail. There's that little corner where it leaked under. But the other problem with it is it is crusty. It is, yeah, it's burnt. It is hard and crusty. Yes, yeah, see, that's just a gloppy mess. But so Chris took them out to the shop and saw, thought if he could just lightly sand them with a 300 grit that maybe that would take that crustiness off and maybe it would save that fern. So as you see that the fern didn't make it into the final staging, so nope, it was not savable. I finished these up with some hemp oil and they are what they are. If they turned out a little bit more crisper than what they were, I was going to change out that top little hook into some leather but cost efficient these are what they are and if I even get 10 bucks out of them I'll be happy So what did you think? I know I packed a lot of techniques into one video, but y'all, I'm still trying to stock two booths. I'm blessed. We are blessed to have two booths, so I need to get a lot of items out. Uh, when you're thrifting every day, you build up quite a hoard, so I need to get the masses done. My OCD does not like to see a lot of things sitting around and waiting to be done, so um, yeah, I just have to get them done and I hope that I did not bore you. I hope that you enjoyed this kind of content. Like I said, there was a lot of techniques going on here, but I thoroughly, I thought, okay, after the wood burning, I got to stop, you know, yeah, I, you know, not everything. Remember guys, not everything works out and it's okay. So I thank you for watching today's video. And if you're part of my YouTube family, thank you so much. I, just your kind words and your comments and your thumbs up just lets YouTube know that you like this kind of content and they keep recommending us. And if you're new to our channel and you like this kind of content, just hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. Thank you again for watching guys.